And let's see how this is this is placed. Next, okay, okay, so it says what is 179 plus 51. Well, there, is, there should be some space here. So I'll do just that. What is 201 plus 226? So we can see it's working. You can see that it's working. Let's just create a space here. Okay. What is 73 plus 161? All right. All right. So we can see now it's working. All right. The only thing is we now have to um, use, the, use the input function. Okay. The input function is basically allowing the user to type in something. All right. So when the user types in something, we ha we need a place to store it, right? We need a place to store it. So when the user types in something, we let's go ahead and 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 store the user's response in here, All right? So I'm going to go ahead and create a variable co and call it user response or user answer. User answer is going to be equal to whatever is being returned or whatever the user types here, and we're going to go ahead and store it in user answer. Once we have the user answer, let's go ahead and return it. Let's return the user answer. We'll use it. We'll use it later on. <clears throat> okay. Now let's create another function called check answer, which is going to check our answer for us. So basically, check the user's answer to see if it's correct. And check answer is going to accept in an argument. So I'm going to go ahead and define a parameter. It's going to accept in the user's answer. So I'm going to define this as a use the user answer. Now it doesn't matter if these names are the, are the same. This var th this variable. The scope of this variable is going to be within this check answer function, and the, and the scope of this user answer fun, um, variable is going to be in the scope of this. Um, it, it's going to be in the ask ask question function. Uh, okay, they are they are they have the same name, but then they are considered as two different variables because they are in two different functions. <coughs> okay, so in main, I'm going to ask question. And I know that ask question is going to return a user answer, right? So I'm going to go ahead and create a user answer variable in main to store the user's answer that is being returned. This is being underlined because I'm, I'm not done. I'm not done with it, with a check answer function. So again, use the, this user answer function or sorry variable is only only accessible in this main function. It's different from this user answer variable, okay? And it's different from this user answer variable. All these variables are considered separate variables because they are in separate functions. So you can use use those names. All right, but you can change them too if it may, if it helps. So we know that we know that the ask question function is going to go ahead and return the user's answer, right? So I'm going to go ahead and store it here. And we know that the check answer function accepts the user's answer. And in the check answer function, I'm going to create an if statement and say if well, before that, let's go ahead and calculate the answer itself. Okay, let's go ahead and calculate the answer itself. Now we know that answer, the answer is going to be called to the random number one, right? The number one, number one, plus the random number two, right? But but this check answer function doesn't have access to those random num these random numbers, right? So again, we the same way the same thing we did here. We can refer to this global random numbers we can refer to them so i'm going to go ahead and do that i'm going to say okay i'm referring to the global variables declared outside of this function which is which is these two variables i'm referring to global um, random number one and global random number two okay now i'm going to create an answer in this check answer function and then add Random number one, which is which is not a which is not a separate variable. I'm de I'm declaring here. I'm only referring to the global, this these global variables. So I'm using whatever value value is stored in them. I'm not redeclaring or anything. I'm just using whatever. I'm just referring to them and using them by by just pulling them in here. I'm pulling them in here. So over here now, I'm just saying the answer is equal to the random number one plus random number two. Once the user has passed in their answer as an argument, when they call the check answer function, I'm going to check to see if the user's answer is equal to that this correct answer. All right? I should even name this as correct answer because that's going to be the correct answer. So I'm going to check here and say if the user the user's answer or basically the user answer is equal to double equals to for compare for for comparison to compare and see if it's equal 
one equal sign assigns what's on the right to what's on the left. Double equal is, is used to compare and see if what's on the left is equivalent to what's on the right. So if the user answer is equal to the correct answer, then the question says we should print congratulations. Right? Congratulations. And then if it's wrong, so let's do else. If it's wrong, then let's go ahead and print the correct answer, right? So we're going to say it's wrong, right? It's wrong. Let's just say it's wrong and it's wrong. The correct answer is let's pass in um, another, another argument in the print function. Say the correct answer is correct answer. Like this. All right. So now we have the ask question function. We have the check answer function. We are in main. We are we are asking the question and it's returning the user's answer. We have to go ahead and check the user's answer. So I'm going to go ahead and call the check answer function, which is going to accept in the user answer as an argument. It's going to refer to the random numbers that were declared outside of outside of the check answer function. Calculate the correct answer in that function. Compare to see if the user's answer is equal to the correct answer. If, if it is, display congratulations. And if it's not, then display is wrong. The correct answer is correct answer. So let's see if this works. Let's just do, see that. Now, we, for, if, for, 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 this, for just testing purposes, right, you can, once, especially once you have big numbers here, and since I have to do some math here, uh, and I'm going to test it a couple of times, let's just, in the, in the where is it? So in the ask question, let's just, for our own purposes, uh, just print out the, the sum. It's like, a, it's like cheating, right? Let's just print out the sum so we can type in that, that answer to see if it's correct. So let's print out random, random number one plus random number two so that we can just see you know we'll, we'll leave this later on we can just see the answer right this is just displaying to us the answer so it's telling us that 37 plus 121 is 158 so if I type in anything other than that well, well yeah, if I type in anything other than that sorry uh, let's say five I hit enter oops I have a problem random number is not defined okay so let's see random number one is what I meant to type here so let's close that and run this again. Okay, it's telling us that 156 plus 39, 195. If I type in, let's say, 67 and hit enter, it tells me it's wrong. The correct answer is 195. Now, this is just to help me get to get it correct, all right? So let's write it again and not do too much work. 191 plus 200, 233. If I type in 423, I get it wrong. It's wrong. It says the correct answer is 400, 424. Now, if I do this and I type in 245 as the correct answer it says congratulations you got it correct right and, and then now you can go ahead and comment this out um, comment this out just so you know you know you don't cheat or, or, or anything like that all right so one more thing I just want to after I have um, displayed the answer after I display the answer this way I just want to put a space in between the question here and then the answer, all right? So what I can do is, after th this is the part asking the question. This, this is the part asking the question here. Um, in the function, I can go ahead and do and add it. Um, also, before it prints out the message, which is in the check answer function, I can go ahead and add it there too. I can say that before you print congratulations or let's say, it's wrong. I, ca I can add a new line character, meaning a backslash n. Just two correct these two characters. The backslash n together um, is is a new line character, right? And what it does is, before it prints now, be it's before this congratulations, right? So before it prints this congratulations, once the you know, interpreter sees this backslash n, it moves the, the the position from where it's at to the next line here. And so anything that comes after it, which is the congratulations that comes after it, after it will be displayed on that on this here, this line here, right? So if I if it sees this, so let's just run this. 
type in 413. Because of the new line character over here, the position was here, but because of the new, new line character, it moved one step down before displaying the, the congratulations. So in other words, the new line character is a special character that displays a new line. All right, so you can do the same thing for this in case the user gets it wrong. So if I run this and I type in, let's say, 56, it says it's wrong, but I still have my new line character. If I run this and I get it correct and I type in, let's say, 251, I get it correct. And there's still my new line character. That's one way to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and delete it, go back to square one, and show you another way. So 202, we are back to square one. All right. Another way to do it is, let's see, is over here. Um, when you when you call the print function this way, and you 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 type in something like this, you tell it to print something like this. It's going to do just that and print it for you. So if I type in 184 here, it's going to do exactly that and print whatever you told it to print for you. But by default, the print function always leaves, always ends with a new line character, meaning. After it's printed what whatever you've told it to print, I mean after it's after it's printed this in this case, it, it's going to move the position from where from the end of this line to the next line. And anything that comes after this print statement is displayed on that next line. Okay. So because this print statement comes after this, after it printed this, it moved the position from where it's at, okay, where it's at to the next line. That's how the print function works by default. It ends with a new line character. So if you call the print function and tell it to print nothing, you are still printing something. That something is just nothing. You are printing out an empty line. In other words, don't print this, but print out nothing on this line. But the way the, the print function is, is works is it always ends with a new line um, character by default. So after printing out nothing on this line, it's going to move the position from where it's at to the next line over here. and this, you know, or, or this basically, anything that comes after this print function is going to be displayed on that next line here. After printing out nothing, it moves the position from where it's at to the next line. Anything that comes after the print function is it's going it's going to be displayed on that next line. So this is also one way to do that. So if I run this, type in 168, we can see we have our new line. If I try a wrong answer and let's type in 56. You can see it's wrong. We have our line here, so we can see that it's working. So that's another way uh, to to create a new line character. And then after uh, one, once you're done, you can go ahead and uh, remove your sorry. Oops, not that one. You can go ahead and remove your cheat, <laughs> My, the cheat I was using over here. Yeah, if you don't want to think, and then now it works. It works normally. All right. Okay, so if you have any questions, it looks like it's working. If you have any questions, please comment down below, and I'll do everything to res respond to them. Um, thank you very much for watching. Um, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time with the next program. All right, then. Bye-bye.